Hey there, everybody. I hope that you are having a sweet, sweet Monday, moon day. We are under that mysterious spell of a full moon. Now, this is a full spring moon. I've heard it called uh, a, a couple of different things, but you know, did you feel that energy going on last night? Did you just, did you just feel it? <laughs> it was really cool here because the clouds were really rolling in and you know, every once in a while that big full moon would just shine down. It was absolutely beautiful. I do believe that our actual full moon was on Saturday, but you know, Sunday's close enough. I hope that all of you are having a sweet day. I've got a couple new journals for the shop today. These are Odes to Spring, of course. I'm trying to get that red thread <laughs> off there. This is a vintage fabric that I bought at a, a sweet churchyard sale that I really love to go to. And something brand new. Now, these are daisies. And you know, I just love daisies. I don't know about you guys, but I have a Montauk daisy plant in my garden. And she has really flourished just uh, since the, the weather has kind of changed and gotten a little bit warmer. So I am propagating her. Now you can propagate a Montauk daisy by uh, just clipping it where the nodules are kind of spaced and you clip it and you put it in some water and lo and behold there are going to be little roots that formed and then you've got a whole new plant i love propagating anything i think it's so much fun so the spawn of this journal has uh green and pink beads on it the beads, uh, the green beads are supposed to be glow-in-the-dark beads, which I thought was really fun. The spine is two inches wide, and I did put some sparkly babies on here because, you know, it's spring. We want to sparkle in the spring. Let's take a look. We've got a sweet little rhinestone right here uh, for the closure of this book. Of course, a flow journal is anything you want it to be. This one is uh, about five inches wide, but of course, when you when you take the the closure off of it, it 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 expands. It's like a sponge in water. Woo! It gets bigger and bigger. <laughs> and you know, with your creativity, you are going to bump it out even more. So I have some slow sewing to start, and one of my favorite images is of an elephant. My second grade teacher was my biggest influence in my artistic life. Probably if it weren't for her, I would not have even... I may have been a musician, but I would not have been so interested in art were it not, this is a hand-painted mini journal right here, were it not for my second grade teacher. Now, her name was Mrs. Madrid, and she, to me, she was magical. So, when we were in second grade, a little bit of salvaged Speaking of grade school, <laughs> this is some uh, an addition worksheet, which I thought was really sweet. Um, I'm sorry, I seem to be using the word sweet a lot today. I said I was sorry. I am not. Um, sweet is a wonderful word. I like it. Talk about sweet. My second grade teacher was sweet. <laughs> Uh, Mrs. Madrid was, you know, she was not from our hometown of Belmont, North Carolina. She was from the big city of Gastonia, North Carolina. Anytime you guys that you see a paperclip on these books, these are curated clusters for you to develop. Now, you know, I've given you things to play with, but it's up to you to decide how you want those elements to go together. I am digging pockets. I always, I've always loved pockets everything I own has to have a pocket in it of some kind or another and I devised these pocket inserts to go into uh, the flow journals so when I was in second grade Mrs. Madrid had us make uh, paper mache animals and I, I made an elephant and she said, now what color are you going to paint that? And I said, I think I'm going to paint my magenta because we had just, she had just talked to us about the color magenta and magenta is like a pinkish purplish kind of color. And I was just intrigued by the whole thing and, you know, and I, uh, 
painted a pink elephant, a pink paper mache elephant. It was one of my most proudest moments in my whole life because I just adored it. And she thought that pink was a perfect color for it. That's the kind of expansive artistic uh, thinking that was present in her classroom and among her students. You guys, these books have four signatures. They've got eight pockets. The eight pockets are just loaded with all kinds of things for you to create with. You know, sometimes I think we kind of get into like a little creative um, slump, especially because we have, you know, the the world is like it is, right? Uh, Daryl from The Walking Dead, Daryl from The Walking Dead, Daryl from The Walking Dead. Okay. All right, we're good now. Oh, The Walking Dead ends on July the, uh, I mean, on April the 1st. Amazing. Okay, so we're kind of talking about the world and, and what a kind of, uh, what can we say, challenging. Uh, it is a world full of contrast, my friends, to quote Abraham. Abraham would approve of that. So you have all these contrasting things that are going on, and you can kind of Feel yourself being uh, sucked into like a an unpleasant whirlpool often. And, you know, a, a flow journal or an art project really does help you, you know, the, the tricky part about whirlpools and falling into holes is to not get close to the edge, right? If you get close to the edge, then you're more likely to be sucked in by the negativity and the challenging way that the world is operating right now. So if you are able to not get close to the edge, then kudos to you. And sometimes an art project or a new little art book or uh, 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 an artistic endeavor can... Um, it can keep you from getting to the edge of that pool, that whirlpool, that pit, that hole, whatever you want to call it, and pull you away from negativity. And I think that's really important right now. We are, uh, I think, March the 30th is the day that I have marked in my meditation book as the beginning of COVID here in Virginia because the governor shut the state down April, May, June, for two and two months, two months and a few weeks. So you've got all kinds of things to play with in here, y'all. And there are handmade elements in here to, uh, to toy around with as well. And it's been a long, hard year. It's been a challenging year. It's been a difficult year. It's been a hard year. And, um, you know, we just have to, and, and often it's just like a struggle to just keep your head above water. This is for reals text. Uh, this is super old. I just absolutely love the paper. I think it's really neat. Sometimes it's just hard to keep your head above water and to keep uh, motivating in, in, in a positive direction because a lot of times, you know, especially if you watch the news, which I stopped watching the news. My brother had to tell me about the shootings in Virginia Beach this past weekend, which was very uh, distressing to hear because I do love Virginia Beach and I love to go there. I haven't been there in several years, but it's one of my favorite spots in the world. And I was sorry that it had been sullied by violence, not the first time, but um, kind of sad. Um, but, you know, um, I, I don't watch the news. I think that's okay. Uh, I read the BBC news because that is, uh, you get a objectivity, maybe, I guess. Maybe uh, the true thing instead of media-driven frenzy stuff. Look at these dwarf cherries, you guys. These are Juliet dwarf cherries, and I just think they're so pretty. That's just such a lovely, lovely photograph there. I spent some time out in the garden this weekend. I've got my um, <laughs> eye rolling as my cardio. Don't you love that? 
I've got uh, my herbs planted, about half my herbs planted. And what we're going to do this year is we're going to use grow bags. Now, we already have our grow bags. We already have our soil. So I need my starter plants. And generally, you know, uh, one might go to a nursery to get starter plants. But I'm hoping to start my own plants, you know, my own tomatoes, my own lettuce, my own herbs, and then put them in the grow bags. If, if you don't know what a grow bag is, just Google uh, vegetable grow bags or whatever. It's a very kind of inventive, ingenious technology, and it's wonderful for people who have... Now, we, we just don't have good soil here, and no matter how we've amended the soil, it really is still not good soil. We have... We just don't have a lot of luck with it. Even... Like I said, uh, you know, we've worked on it and worked on it and worked on it, and it's just not good soil. But a grow bag is like a, mm, you know, it's kind of like a, I don't know, a cloth grocery bag in a way. This book has a really large spawn on it. It's two and a half inches uh, thick, and then it has this super fun bead strand. Again, you know, I'm just really taking advantage of those glow-in-the-dark um, green beads, which I really do like, and then these sparkly things because spring, woohoo, and a rhinestone closure here. Oh, we should measure this way too. This book is, I always flip my ruler around the, long, the wrong way, about four and a quarter inches thick. You know, we've talked about ways to use this, and you can use it just like this. Um, a lot of people like to like to use it as a vertical file folder and you can just you know zoom through here right quick and find a piece of paper you want or find a word that you want or an image that you want you can disassemble the book and use the hairy paper clips as all kinds of fiber elements i watched a great video with um uh oh gosh tracy tracy fox uh creative tracy fox journals and she did these um here, I'll show it to you. I love these things. I'm kind of super addicted to them. These are, I think she called them spirit sticks. Uh, she called them book bling as well. And I just, I love them. I just think they're really so much fun. But, you know, a good starter for something like a book bling project would be that you've got all these fibers and things to work with up here. That would be great for a book book bling project <laughs> no, that wasn't going to come out the right way a uh, hand painted little mini book here you know mini books are really fun y'all because it's a small project you can finish it in a day you can use it as a dream journal you can use it as a jot it down journal you know maybe it's your bright ideas journal and i know beyond a shadow of a doubt you have brilliant bright ideas all day long. Don't discount yourself. You really do. You have things that you would like to do, places you would like to go, things you would like to see. And a mini book is really fun because you can finish it all in one day. You know, decide on a theme for it and just finish that sucker up. The, again, this is a curated cluster. I've given you things to play with, and then it's up to you to decide what to do with them. You can just play with the cluster, or you can choose to combine that cluster with, you know, things that you might find in one of your flow journal pockets, and then maybe you want to combine that with some of this, you know, really fun hairy paperclip action that we have going on here. I really am enjoying putting fabric elements into the journals. You know, another little curated piece right here. It's fun to, you know, we were talking kind of about uh, negativity and that hole that we sometimes get into. And it's fun to have all your supplies just in a little book like this. And then that way you don't get into the, you know, the uh, hmm, miasma <laughs> of trying to get out all your art supplies and then trying to decide what to use. And, you know, before you know it, you've gone down a rabbit hole and it's four hours later and you still don't have that tag made or you still don't have that art trading card made or you still don't have that art trading coin made or you don't have that greeting card made because you got kind of lost in your stuff. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just that if you're looking for quick creativity and creativity where you can, you can, you know, you can go from, um, 
from start to finish super fast than something like this is probably for you. Everyone was thinking it. I just said it. I like using these sassy sayings with all kinds of imagery. Uh, you can find sassy sayings in my Etsy store. I'll leave a link in the description box below. You know, speaking of that link in the description box below, I really do want to say thank you guys so much for those of you who dropped money into our tip jar. <clears throat> you know, it's really sweet uh, to, to be able to... Uh, to funnel that money into projects and into people who, um, uh, you know, were maybe having a hard time. You, you guys know that you, you know, whatever you do always gets kind of passed along to to others. And I'm really super do appreciate your kindness in dropping coinage or dollarage into the uh, the tip jar over there at Hotmail. And you can find information about that below, too. Mmm, asparagus. I've never had much luck with asparagus. I would like to try it. But, you know, it's just one of those things that, um, that, um, it's a perennial after you get the thing started. But I've never been able to really get it started in a proper way. I like some calendar imagery, especially this time of year. You know, you guys, you have lots and lots of calendars laying about. Uh, from last year or from this year if you donate to organizations like the ASPCA they always send you a nice calendar any sort of animal organizations usually do speaking of animals our Seuss is doing well he has not peed in the house since Thursday so we're feeling, feeling real positive about that and um Last night was the first time that we all slept in the bed and nobody woke up in the middle of the night um, biting or growling. Yeah. Including me and Chris. No biting, no growling. <laughs> I'm kidding. Mia has, uh, Mia's coming along. It's been a kind of a hard adjustment for her, but she is getting extra walk time. She's getting extra snacks. She's getting extra love. Um, it's been hard for her. Kronk passed away almost two years ago, our big Rhodesian Ridgeback, and she's been the only baby for two years, and she's kind of spoiled, but that's okay. You know, that's what doggies are for. That's It's for to give them love and to spoil them, but Seuss is doing well. We did put him on... Um, He's having a cooked diet now, which means he's having like combina and Mia is too combinations of things like um, you know, ground turkey or ground chicken, uh, chicken breast, chicken thighs with uh, some grain and some vegetables. And I've been using brown rice, of course, because that's kind of not as processed as other rice. This is one of my favorite things I've ever made. This is me. I don't like morning people. Or mornings or people that about says it all present company excluded my friends present company excluded so he's you know he's coming along um, he Mia has had enough of him this morning he's very bouncy he's a puppy and uh, she's 12 years old and <laughs> she nipped him on his little mouth and ever since that happened, it's been like, huh, okay, well, if she doesn't want to play, we'll just wait on her to play. Now, I have to note that yesterday, she wanted to play, and she played with him, and that was fine. But, man, when she does not want to have it, she does not want to have it. She's like me. She just nip ya, just bite ya. <laughs> Oh gosh, we just rambled and rambled today. I hope you guys like these journals. I'm going to put them in the Etsy store a little later on this afternoon. I have n not really been making a whole lot of journals. There's a lot of stuff going on here. And um, I'm just glad to be able to offer you guys a couple journals this week. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I appreciate your support. I appreciate your kindness. Have a great day. See you soon. Bye.